Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. It's, um, it's, uh, I was going to say it's good to be with you, but it isn't really because um, for 38 years, I promised my wife that I would take her to the Chelsea Flower Show. And uh, for the first time in our marriage, I got two free tickets uh, to be there this morning. Anyway, I'm with you and uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of a better place. Um, <laughs> but anyway, bless you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just share Joe's enthusiasm and encouragement actually at this time. Um, I, I'm never quite sure at the moment whether this is the best of times or the worst of times. And I, I find myself oscillating many times during a day, depending on who I'm speaking to. Um, and uh, sometimes I'm just absolutely encouraged and, uh, and then other times it's just overwhelming, isn't it? Um, you know, dealing with our own city here in Manchester, um, you know, we are actively planning for tens of thousands of unemployed tens of thousands um that's that's in the planning phases at the moment um the issues uh, around health uh, the struggling survival of bcse sector is going to be a massive issue um uh and in the same way on the one hand we're seeing loads of encouragement from church and growth online and so on and uh, some churches are innovating um but other churches are not and those churches who weren't doing much mission before covid are certainly not doing much mission now. So, so there is a, it, you know, uh, it's hard to say there is one picture here. Um, uh, the churches that were accelerating and closing down will accelerate even further. So that's another issue. Um, uh, some of the education issues uh, that are very much prominent at the moment um, in terms of uh, uh, when schools open, of course, they're becoming an issue. Um, you know, for, for most middle-class families, um, I'm sure homeschooling has been a real challenge, but I, I live on a council estate and uh, there's, there's, not, there's not a lot of schooling going on in homes at the moment on this estate, um, uh, because that's just the way it is. You know, I, I live with a neighbor uh, next door. She uh, has five children. She has one mobile phone. That's it, no computers, nothing else. How do you do homeschooling with one mobile phone with five children? And that's just a microcosm of the picture. So, so there, is, there are a lot of challenges going forward. Um, however, I, I think like Joe, I share this incredible optimism because I, I've never seen such an opportunity like this. Um, I've never seen such an opportunity like this for place-based unity. By that, I mean relational, prayerful, missional unity in towns and cities, which we're tracking across the country. I've never seen more opportunity for witness to society, engagement with society, and also a reformation of what the church is. Um, uh, certainly in terms of place-based unity, um, there is an acceleration of that in, in cities and towns across this country, but also we're tracking this across the world. Movement Day is about in about 200 different cities across the world. We're seeing um, incredible activity from Mumbai um, to New York uh, to uh, uh, Melbourne, um, Papua New Guinea and so on right across the world where churches are coming together like never before. Um, there's an acceleration of that. There's um, an innovation in that as well. Um, independence really doesn't make much sense during COVID, does it? Um, you know, the, the issue is we don't want to stand alone. Actually, even if I can't get out of the house, perhaps I've got neighbours who can help me. Um, uh, you know, I think these kind of times show that we do need each other. Um, and there are conversations now happening which we would never have dreamed happening before where people are, are actively talking about cooperation, they're talking about strategic coordinated activity together. So I'm, I'm really encouraged about place-based unity. I'm really encouraged about the opportunities we have within society, whether it's evangelism or prayer. I mean, prayer has just exploded all over the country at the moment. Uh, Exeter is, is regularly having 1,000 people on a weekly prayer meeting. Um, just That's just one group of churches. So, so there is some great stuff um, uh, happening in terms of witness to society and then engagement with society. Um, you know, society really needs us to operate as one body at the moment. It really does. We, we've got a call with our mayor, Andy Burnham, coming in in a couple of weeks time. He doesn't know who to talk to. He needs to talk to the whole church, the whole body of the church. And you can only do that if you're strategic and coordinated. That's happening in many cities. Teesside, Bristol, Reading, and many other places where there's a real unity coming together, where, you know, it's not just one food bank, 
it's a cooperation of a load of food banks together. It's not just one uh, um, debt relief agency, it's a cooperation of a whole load of debt relief agencies and so on and so forth. So the coming together, the engagement with society, um, things are opening up like never before. I mean, I was hearing only this morning, um, previous funds, which were closed to churches, um, are now just, just you know, casting their rules aside, saying basically, if you're doing a good stuff, we want to get behind you. So opportunities in regard to that. And then opportunities in regard to the reformation of the church. Um, and I think for me, this is probably the greatest opportunity we have. We have an opportunity. I, I think we're at a crossroads at the moment. And it reminds me of Jeremiah 29, where Hananiah the prophet is saying, um, keep your heads down. Don't worry about it. We're soon going back to normal. We're soon going to get out of here, out of Babylon, and we're going to go back to back to normal. Keep yourselves to yourselves. Don't worry about it. It's just a storm. It will pass. Um, then Jeremiah comes, of course, with a message. He, he's never, ever given a popular message. He must have prayed for a popular message one day. But he's given again the unpopular message to say this isn't going to pass soon. Now, what are you to do is to embed yourself in society, bless the place to which I have sent you, because if it prospers, you will prosper. Now, that's a very different attitude, isn't it? If it prospers, you will prosper. I personally don't want to talk about the recovery of the church at the moment. I want to talk about the recovery of our cities and our towns and our nations. That's what I want to talk about, because I think our prosperity is based upon their prosperity going forward. Um, I think the church has an incredible opportunity to reshape itself, to find out what discipling really means for the scattered church, to find out what it means to be embedded and influence society, to find out what it means to work as one body, beautifully diverse, to discover place again, um, what it means to be in a place and what is God's design and purpose for your place. Um, what it means for us to have closer links with non-Western societies where, where COVID now is putting us on, on the same level playing field where safety, um, you know, for, for the Western world, safety really wasn't too much of an issue really. Um, but for the non-Western world, it's always an issue. Now we've joined the, the, in a sense that non-Western world where safety is constantly the issue. Um, uh, I think there's a newfound priority of prayer coming. And I think hopefully we're gonna learn to be better human beings. Um, the opportunity for the reformation of the church, I don't think there's been a better opportunity than it has now. And I think we need to grab hold of this opportunity and see as much of it as we can.